Good morning. Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Tuesday, June 22nd. It seems like we just started June. Here's the 22nd already. Uh, important message this morning. I uh, almost wish that this video would be like mandatory reading, mandatory listening to everybody from Collision Church, just like when you used to go to school and there'd be mandatory books that you had to read. Uh, but uh, God will put on the land of hearts the ones that he wants to hear this. So good morning, Marcy. Good morning, John. We're in Matthew chapter 26. I'm going to read verses 47 through 56. Good morning, Will. Uh, this is right after Jesus tells his disciples, Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. It says, While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with him. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Friend, do what you came for. Interesting. Jesus still calls him friend. Here he was, here to betray Jesus. Uh, kisses him. Jesus knows exactly what he's doing and still calls him friend. Good morning, Veronica. Good morning, Paul. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for a sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. But put the sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Now, we read in, others, in other Gospels that it was Peter that drew out the sword, swung it and cut it at the... One of the, at the at the at the person and cut off his ear and with that Jesus it said Jesus reached and put the ear back on the person healed the person right there in front of all of them and they still arrested him Jesus said do you think that I cannot call my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels but how then would the scripture be fulfilled that say it must happen this way at that time, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. And then this is what I want to talk about this morning. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. When they saw Jesus being arrested, when they saw the crowd and how angry they were, and and, and realizing what was going to happen to Jesus, said the disciples deserted him and fled. Good morning, Christina. Um, so, good morning, Paul. I don't know if I said Paul already. Um, so, this is what I want to talk about. What would it take? What would it take for you to leave Jesus? We read this and we say, wow, why did the disciples desert him like that and run away? But would we have been any different had we been there? Would we, have done, would we have done the same thing the disciples did? I'm sure we would have because I mean, the disciples were godly men. And yet they, they did it. So what would it take for you to, to, to leave Jesus, to run away from Jesus? I have seen people leave Jesus for, for a lot of different reasons. Uh, I've, I've seen people right now that are leaving Jesus for drugs and alcohol. People that... That are telling me every Sunday they're going to be there at church and they don't because they're choosing alcohol and drugs over 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 Jesus. I've seen people leave Jesus for a boyfriend or a girlfriend that was more important to them than Jesus was. I've seen people leave Jesus for a job or a career in, in, in advancement. Uh, they can they can advance in in their job or or make more money. But it requires them having to work on Sundays. I've seen people leaving Jesus for sports. God, sports takes away most people on Sundays. I've seen people leave Jesus just simply for laziness. I don't know how many people have told me, Oh, I can't wait till we get back together again. I miss meeting so much. And then we hardly see them. Laziness. Ask yourself, what has ever kept you from going to church on Sunday? What, what, is, what, what are the things that keep you from going to meet your father? At his, at, remember what it says? The, the church is the body of Christ. 
Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It'll be here until the day I return. He's protecting it, and yet we're not, we're not, we're not even, we're not, we're not even trying to save it. What what has kept you from going to day, having daily prayer time? What keeps you from having daily devotions? What's kept you from the past from ever watching these, these daily devotions? And think about that. The disciples left Jesus for fear of being arrested. Some of us have left Jesus for far less reasons or excuses. Um, it always amazes me how many people, how people choose other things over going to church. Well, most times, most times, most times it's just apathy or laziness. Well, can't wait to see you and your family. I hope it's soon. Uh, I, I used to hear the excuse that, oh, it's just so hard on Sunday mornings. You got to get up, get the family ready, get the kids ready. It's just so hard to make it. Now we have church on Sunday nights, and they don't, they can't use that excuse anymore. Uh, so it wasn't a reason; it was just an excuse. Um, the excuse doesn't work anymore. And yet many people are choosing not to be there on Sunday nights. Then there's the matter of supporting your church, both financially and with your giftedness. Uh, churches can't survive if the people that belong to that church don't support it. Uh, collision only collision only only averages about seven to eight offerings per week, every week. Uh, last week, this last week, we didn't meet, so it was just an online message. And as a result, of only, there's only been three offerings this week. Three offerings. Now, a church can't survive with that. Uh, it, and, and even when we get seven or eight, that's only about one-fifth of the of, of, of what it should be. It's only about one-fifth of what the offering should be. That means four-fifths of people just come and don't support their church financially. And as Dave Sloan says all the time, you know, give back to God. It's not, it's not a matter of how much you give. It's, it's the heart. Remember the widow that only gave two small coins? And Jesus says she gave more than all the rest because it was, what she, it was all she had. So if, if you don't have that much, it's just a matter of putting a quarter in there. It, it's, it's the matter of being faithful to God. It's a matter of, of saying, I'm going to support my church. And then, and then using your giftedness. Using your giftedness. They say all the time, 10, 20% of the church does all the work. The rest just attend. What are you, what are you doing to support your church? What are you doing to make sure your church is there next week and the week after and the next month and the next year? Collision has survived even during the pandemic. Now, we've survived for almost 12 years that we've survived. But, but can we keep on surviving? Not at the present rate. I'm, I'm just being honest with you. We, we will not be able to survive at the present rate. We will, we will run out of money. We will not be able to pay rent. We'll not be able to pay insurance. I will have to go back to doing the the messages online. I, I will keep on. I'm not going to stop. I will keep on doing my, what I'm doing. What about you? What about you? Because at the current rate, we have about not much more than three months to, to, to survive so with, with the money that we have built up in, in the account. And then what will everyone say then? During the pandemic, everybody would say, oh, I can't believe that we can't meet a church. Oh, I miss that so much. And then where are they? What will they say if we have to close our doors? What will they say? They'll, they'll, at least they'll have an excuse then not to go to church. I know I'm being hard, but it's reality. And, and it's reality that the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. They saw Jesus being arrested. They, they haven't even seen yet what Jesus is going to go through. They haven't even seen that yet. All they're seeing is Jesus being arrested. And as a result of that, they deserted him and fled, it says. Listen, then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Are we going to desert to Jesus? Are we ever going to desert Jesus? Are you ever going to put other things ahead of Jesus? Oh, I hope not. 
And, and, and I see the names of those of you that are watching this. You're, you're the committed ones. You're the ones that are. That's why I said at the beginning, I wish this was mandatory read, watching so that people that need to see this would see this and hear this. Um, I'm excited for, for this Sunday. Um, as a, God's laid a great message on my heart for people to hear uh, as, we're, as we start now the book of, of the Gospel of Luke. And I wonder uh, if the people that are meant to be there will be there. Um, I'm sure hoping so. I'm praying that God will bring them there. Uh, it's a message for, for many people, many people. It's a message of hope uh, that, I, that I hope they will be there. So I thank those of you that are committed to these to these daily devotions, that watch them. Uh, Marcy, I wish I could be there. Yes, I wish you were here too. You were so faithful. Uh, John, you're so faithful. Uh, but there's many who are not. And we need to pray that God will lay it on their heart to start, to, to start being faithful, to start putting Jesus first in their lives and not let all these other things come ahead of Jesus. Too many, too many so-called Christians are putting way too many things ahead of Jesus. Uh, make sure you don't ever do that, okay? God bless you, and thanks for watching. Tonight is our uh, youth group, Impact. I'm excited. There's a new girl that's coming tonight from our, from our church that's just started attending our church. Uh, that's going to come to Impact tonight. I'm excited to have her there. John, I, I would love to see Mary come with Victor and Vanessa. To, oh, I'm going to be contacting her today, see if it's a possibility, if she feels good enough to come with them. Would love to have them there. We need to start them out at young ages so that when they get older, they will, what does it say, bring the child up in the ways of the Lord, and when they get older, they will not move far from it. We need to be bringing them up now in the ways of the Lord when they're young. God bless you. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Bye.